Penny who? Never heard of her. Oh dear me, it is a hot day today. Mmm. Now this plant I've got here is called Penny Royal. Penny Royal, it... you again. Look, I'm doing a video now. Can we um, have a little chat later, please? Thank you very much. Now this plant I've got here is called Penny Royal. And it is a member of the mint family. And it has a really, really pungent smell. Um, I personally think this is one of the most pungent plants I've ever, ever smelled. I mean, it's very, very similar to spearmint. I'll tell you a little story about this plant. I was actually travelling down through Macedonia, through Greece. Um, my wife planned a little trip for us, We're quite a big trip actually. Um, and we went down through mainland Greece and we ended up in Athens. And in Athens, there was a market. And what I found there was a little cretin stall. And the ladies there had a stall called Herbal Crete. Now I know from reading quite a few books that the cretins are very, very good with wild herbs. And that comes to down to medicinal herbs, to wild herbs for cooking. A real survivalist diet have the cretins. And this one really stood out to me. The lady there informed me that this was what they use for colds, fevers and things like that and um, I bought a small jar of it, of the tea basically and I put it in the, I kept, I took it home with me and I said to my wife, I said I wonder if I can um, harvest any seeds from this. Um, so I looked at the very very bottom, I was sort of held it at an angle and was shaking it and I noticed there was a few little black bits, I thought maybe, just maybe, if I put that in a soil seed bed I could sow it. And out of that whole pack of tea, I managed to germinate just one of them. And out of that, I managed to now get quite a few of them going. And they have a very, very weeping habit. And what you can do is just bend these down, put them in the soil, and they will root. So I've now got four massive clumps of this stuff. And I've got to say, it is a very, very powerful, powerful herb. And it's it's not one to be taken lightly either. Um, some people have actually died from taking too much of this stuff. Um, I couldn't believe it. When I started reading up on it, I thought, how have I not heard of this herb, you know? Now, obviously the one that I've got might be a variation that likes, I mean, Crete's a hot country, you know, but it does grow up in the mountains. But I've had some success here. Um, I, I, I noticed it doesn't like to dry out, but it's been growing very successfully. And if you're into herbal remedies and things like that, I would certainly give this a go. One thing I would point out about this plant, which I've noticed is, it does, it really does do what it says on the tin. If you dry this out or you have it fresh and you knock this up in a tea, it's very powerful at breaking through mucus. And I've actually tested this and it's very effective. Not to be taken too lightly, but you're not gonna have a problem with this if you, I mean, the Romans and the Greeks, this has been cultivated since them times and they would use it in cooking. I would just recommend use it for tea. And um, just by eating a few leaves, you're not, you're not gonna do yourself any damage, but it does have an effect on the body. You know, it, it will it will make a difference. It is, you know, so 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 what I recommend is don't eat it if possible. All right. I mean, I've eaten a bit of it. It hasn't served me a problem, but I wouldn't recommend it because you don't know if you've got any. You just don't know. All right. But certainly a cup of tea with this stuff is fine. Now, one of the most popular uses of this plant, and again, I found it very, very, very useful, is you can blend it up or you can mix it up, dry it, and use it for pest control. I mean, it really is, if you tried this stuff, the, the smell, it is so powerful. And what they used to use this for was repelling fleas and things like that. In the Middle Ages, they'd actually put this stuff, I mean, it, it was always used in the Middle Ages, but today, the use of it has just dissipated. But I mean, I, I, it, is a, it is a powerful herb, and I would certainly use it. I'm gonna try it on the aphids. I've also heard that this is good all sorts of anything like that, anything, um, mites, things like that, they just will not go near this plant, and rats don't like it. It's like mint on steroids, basically. Um, so it's definitely one, if you're into that sort of stuff, using natural 
plants for so if you you know you want to replace chemicals in terms of repelling insects and things like this this is the one one of the biggest ones for it as well was mosquitoes as a plant it's actually called mosquito plant as well in the middle ages because this is good for ridding the area of mosquitoes so if you've got a patio or an outside area um, a couple of pots with this you know can really help the situation um, dried hung up things like that or um, just literally bunging a little bit on a on a smoker or on your on your barbecue or something like that it's really just to get some fumes you know just to get the aroma in the air so really how they would use it for pest control things like that they also used to sort of smash it up and rub it all over their body um, I'm not going to demonstrate that for you today I think that would be a little bit inappropriate and um, they also say that this was actually used as an abortive um, for for ladies early on in pregnancy and it <laughs> They do actually say, do not, if you're pregnant, do not use this plant at all because it, it, it does have abortive qualities. So it's, you know, it's not one to be messed with. And I'll tell you something, it, you know, you'll be amazed just, just at the smell of this. I know I keep talking about it, but honestly, you do. I mean, look, just, just have a little sniff. Look, see what I mean? Oh, blow your head off. Yeah, and on that note as well, children should not take this. So, I mean, I don't know very many herbs that have this many health warnings. I quite kind of like it. It almost feels like um, living a bit dangerously, living a bit dangerous on the edge, should we say. You know, I wouldn't drink the tea every day, but I certainly, the cretins certainly hasn't done them no, no harm, certainly hasn't done me any harm. They say don't drink it every day. I probably drank it every day for four days while I had an illness, and um, it really did help, especially if you get that really sticky mucus in your throat and you just can't get rid of it. This one, you know, you boil up the water and you just breathe in them, and I tell you, it just... It, it not, it's like Vicks, basically. It's, it's brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant. I think it's just a brilliant herb to have around the garden. And another thing with this herb, it, it will spread, but it's not as aggressive as mint. So, you know, it, 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 it's not something you're going to put, you're going to worry about putting in the ground, particularly. Um, and it's a novelty. If you want to, you know, if you've got stepping stones, you plant it around the stepping stones, the, the smell you're going to get from it, it's quite remarkable. You know, it's like lemon balm, but more of a spearmint flavour smell. Um, typically coughs, migraines, fevers, they're the three, main three that you want to use for this. Um, it's really, really simple to propagate, as I say. Um, what I'd be tempted to do with this one, if you look, is just now chop this into maybe five, six plants and repot them. That's something you can do. Um, what I do is I just bend the stems over. They very soon, very quickly develop roots and you can, I mean this plant, I could turn this into about 10 plants. So it's the same sort of thing as oregano, but because it has that weeping habit, it's really, really easy to, to develop one plant into many, many clones. And I've got to say, when this stuff flowers, it um, has quite delicate little round mint-like flowers. Um, it's really, really good for bees and beneficial insects. You'll be looking at the flowers and you'll be thinking, it'll be little little solitary bees and things you've never seen before so that's always a really good sign as well so there you have it penny royal bit of an unusual very very strong smell lots of benefits to having it in the garden and if you're unwell it's a must-have don't take too much of it you'll be showing your friends and showing off with it great great plant get out there and grow some all right